Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the D Gentleman Show. Uh, I hope you guys had a good Christmas. Uh, to all the Jews out there, happy Hanukkah. Uh, all the atheists out there, happy you. <laughs> uh, once again, it's your boy, Brett. I'm here with NFL All-Pro Javon Curse. Sports handicapper book, whatever he goes by, extraordinaire Jay Rude. And we got a- Alex the Fraggle, Monica. <laughs> Unbelievable. Do you, you don't even know what, fra- what a Fraggle is, do you? A little before my time. I'm a 90s baby, Brett. Well, you Googled it. Would you say you resemble a Fraggle or no? I'd say the hair is not yet. Not bad. Not bad. All right, well, let's get into it. Uh, crazy week 17. Uh, the NFL playoff picture is here. Some of us were on point. Some of us were off. Jay, your Redskins made it by the skin of their teeth. They didn't. They almost got in. <laughs> What was oh, it, five boy. games they were on? <laughs> took, took, took a flyer on a team. You know, yeah. you know Josh Johnson, maybe next year. But why, what, was your, what, what was your deal with them? Like, you really were rooting for them, huh? Or you really thought uh, they were going to make uh, it? Fundamentally, I thought they were a good team. Right. Uh, you know, uh, you lose two quarterbacks to snap fibulas. That's kind of a rough year. Sure. They also had a pretty strong running back. Por- uh, yeah, right, and not, not Portis. All right, um, stop. We all, we all knew Redskins were not going to make the playoffs. <laughs> and I picked the Browns, too. You know, just uh, trying a little reverse psychology you know there. What? Reverse right. psychology. I, I was pulling for the Browns. Me man. too, man. I, I really want them to get there, dude. But that was a fun comeback. Yeah, but what, what got me mad is, is they were coming back and then, then they didn't cover, right? Oh, no, they covered. No, covered. they didn't. Yeah. No, they didn't. Plus not six. Me. Not me. Uh, not me. Never mind. Oh. Not me. Never mind. That was a dumb bet. Is that called a Freudal slip? I don't know what that's called. <laughs> Whatever. You know what I feel good about, though? That none of us took Kirk Cousins and the Vikings. Yeah. All of us took Nick Foles. You know, I didn't, you didn't know which, yeah. what, uh, which Vikings team was going to show up. They were just so unpredictable. I think we, we oh, started yeah. riding them about four weeks we ago. We were for a little bit, but it's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde over there. No, I definitely showed up at the betting windows, too. I mean, early in the season when everyone thought that there was going to be a lot of potential there, they got bet. You know, but as soon as, as, soon as a, a few players have to tear up some tickets and throw it in the garbage, very fickle. They, 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 they stop backing them quickly. Wow. But potentially, though, man. Potent- potentially? They were, supposed to, they were supposed to be there. They're supposed to be dancing right now. Dancing? Yeah. I don't yeah. understand this. <laughs> well, I was great, off. Great receiving core and they thought did. they had the, cor- the quarterback, but. Yeah, they did. Yeah. I was off with Pittsburgh. I, Pittsburgh didn't even make the playoffs. <laughs> I, I, I thought they were going to win the division. I, I knocked the Ravens out. Those were my picks for the AFC. Yeah. So I was wrong about that. Um, all of my picks, all 12 of my teams. Teams came in? Yeah. And we all had Andy up all night to get lucky. Did you have the, oh, you didn't have the Ravens, right? Uh, I had the Browns. Oh, yeah, that's right. What am I talking about? Uh, I'm, I'm so out of it. Yeah, I had the Ravens. It's been a rough New Year's, rough. Uh, and coach charges. Just eating and drinking. In. What was that, buddy? No, I had the coach and charges limping in as well, so. How do you guys feel that the majority of the quarterbacks being paid the highest in the league are at home this weekend? I think. I think, think there's some GMs that uh, should be accountable. I think that says a lot. I mean, yeah, what, 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 I mean, what, of course you're going to think. I mean, it's just a shock, but is it really? I mean, the best quarterback is still Tom Brady, which if, if this doesn't yeah. show you how easy the AFC East is to win in, I mean, you know what I mean? You, you said up. that earlier today. It's teed up. It's been a decade and a half, right. three franchises in the division that can't get it together. And did anybody watch the uh, BCS bowl games that meant nothing except for the other two? Speaking of which. (laughs) The the Georgia game was pretty uh, significant from a a wagering perspective for us. Yeah, that's right. The the outright win was was very big. We had somebody uh, somebody email me a a question for you. I forgot to bring that up. About what was the biggest loss the casinos ever hit, ever took. Are you able to say that? On one game? Um, or for the year? Did you ever lose? Biggest, you never lost for the year. No, no. Biggest bet I ever paid out was last year, Eagles money line. We had a guy bet it for $3 million. What? One four and a half million. <laughs> <laughs> it's the biggest payout no. I've ever had to make, yeah. Really? Yeah. The way. We paid him in cash. You guys sent him a check? What do you do? What do you do? Uh, I think we probably uh, gave him uh, chips and he went to the cage and then. You gave him $4 arra- million arranged in it, chips? Arranged it somehow. <laughs> Try to get it back. You have yeah. a million dollar chip? I'm not walking no. out of here. With 20, 20, 100,000, I think, as high as we go. But we probably just did a paper trail on that. Probably, it's not as glamorous as you think it was. It's like a banking transaction. Yes, yeah, straight up. But yeah, that's the biggest, biggest loss. The biggest win for us, uh, I wasn't uh, in my position at that time, but it was when 
uh, the Patriots upset the Rams the first time when they were 14-point dogs. Uh, we had a guy bet uh, over $7 million on the money line on the Rams. Who are these people? Yeah. That was like seven million on the money line win. Uh, I was going to win him like uh, four hundred thousand or something like that. That was like he they were seven, huge favorites. Was that he bet seven million to win four hundred thousand? The first time, yeah. He bet seven million to win four hundred thousand. Wild. Yeah. And lost. Who is this guy? Where, <laughs> I know he can't. So what? Where is he? It, and why? Why are we hanging trust out? Me, with trust me. Trust me. He. It, it. It. didn't. It didn't dent him. So. That's somewhere in the in the desert. It's crazy. I just. No, no. He's still swinging away. That's that's insane to me. I, I lost fifty dollars and I, and I and I was crying. Mm. <laughs> All right. At least you didn't go one and eight in the uh, the bowl selection like uh, my neighbor here. I literally took West Virginia thinking Will Greer was starting. Hey, get into the natty thing. Bowl yeah, no, no, I know. Yeah, I was, I was waiting for everyone to say. All right. All right. Fiesta Bowl. Everyone wanted to know how UCF would turn out against LSU. Seven point spread. Forty to thirty two Tigers. LSU win, gentlemen. Your thoughts on UCF? Did they deserve a top four seed and moving forward? They were dethroned as the national champs. <laughs> <laughs> they were. <laughs> they were, they were who we thought they were. They were who we thought they yeah, were. Yeah, it, it was a nice run there, man, but um, <coughs> they ran into some now, a I, real team. I would have liked to have seen the Milton kid play, you know? Yeah. That would have been a more, that been a, more that test been a of huge it. Difference. But I think the huge result difference. would have been similar to what happened. I, st- I mean, even without him, I still think they still played a pretty good ball game. But maybe at like the end of the game, it doesn't really tell the full story. There yeah. was a point in the first half where LSU was minus 150 because UCF had an early lead. Just putting that out right. there. But we, again, I think this hits home the point that we need a playoff system. These bowls mean nothing unless we make them mean something. I mean, look at the momentum Ohio State has. And Notre Dame, I mean, what, what happened there? Oh. Oh. That was awful. It hurt. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the but Oklahoma Alabama game was a lot better than uh, I thought that was going to turn right. out. That was a good game. Oklahoma covered. I like that too. Okay. Do, do you still put uh, UCF in a eight game playoff? If they were undefeated, absolutely. I would. Yeah. Yeah. I you got to understand the, something it's though. Sitting on a, a twenty five game. But they don't play seven. anybody. It doesn't matter if, if that's not their. If fault. the UNLV went undefeated, playing in the the Mountain West, playing New Mexico, right, Boise, all those guys, and they literally played nobody. So then maybe we they take the be conference in winners of each conference and put them up against. That's each what conference. that's that's the that right there, Brett, is what need, that's the fix. That's I mean, that's and the then fix. Then let it all fall where it may. I mean, look. If, if look at these guys that are limping into the playoffs right now, uh, and you know we're going to talk the playoffs later, but you know you have teams that once they're in, it's all bets are off. It's it's a clean slate, which is so why you play harder. Like right. you know you but you, you got but they to had to get there by beating competition. I mean, if if you get to go to the World Series by beating the the Little League World Series champ, how is that a test? <laughs> That's a bad analogy. Why do we You're comparing I, apples I, to I mean, love what the, you the, did the, there. The, the, the regular, the regular, <laughs> don't, don't encourage this. The regular season carries weight. I right. mean, you know that yes. you should have to perform to a certain level in the regular season. Okay. Well, let, and and their schedule isn't. I mean, seventy-two is not that is not the level that you need to qualify. I get it, I get to, it but right. this, isn't, this right. isn't the BCS where people gotta you know where where you have people voting on difficulty of schedule. If you're undefeated, Colon- you're undefeated, Condoleezza Rice was voting on how difficult their schedule was. I'm saying if you're undefeated, <laughs> you should be in a playoff game because you're still playing Division One. Look, they beat L- what was it, LSU last year? What did they beat last Auburn. year? Auburn. Auburn. They beat Auburn last yeah. year. That was a legit team, and they had a legit argument. I mean, obviously, it came out in the wash, but I think that if you have a playoff system, it's what was the the bowl, the Cheeto bowl? What was the Cheez-Its bowl? The Cheez-Its bowl. TCU unseated Cal. 10-7. Okay. Make that bowl mean something. Make it mean something. Oh, yeah, part yeah. Of, all right, Jim, I, I agree with your, that 100%. I want to get your thoughts. A lot of guys sat the out these bowl games. Yeah. Did, did they really hand out cheese? It's, it's, <laughs> shut up. Yeah, he, we, he was at the Lemonhead Bowl. <laughs> I still got my lifetime supply of Lemonheads. Get it out. I was at the Chico Stick uh, Bowl. Oh, Chico Stick. <laughs> you get this from the corner store. <laughs> well, let me ask you, if you're a first-round pick projected and you're in one of these bowl games, maybe not one of the Fab Four, if you will, but yeah. you're in one of them, like let's say Michigan, Florida, mm-hmm. are you sitting out? Are you pulling a Joey Bosa? Excuse I would sit out only if it's not for like a, a national championship or a, as long as my team is in the playoffs or something. That's what right. I mean. But I mean so if yeah. the bowl meant yeah. something, you're if it, playing. If it meant something, yeah. But I, I mean, that's why I think, Brett, what you said earlier, mm-hmm. 
the big conferences, the winners of each, you put right. them in, and then the UCF or the out of conference team that go like Notre Dame, right? Who has a decent strength of schedule and has a decent resume that year, is in, and right. then. Hopefully, all the players play. Because what, outside of Ben Simmons and March Madness, everyone's playing. Why do right. we love it? They're all in. Why do we love the NFL playoffs? They're all in. Dude, don't, don't forget, Ohio State has a lot of momentum. That you know, that they, Everything changes you know, once, once, once the uh, postseason, if you're in a postseason play. Right. I think we're beating that up. But, but that was something you brought up, too, about the, the players just... I, was that ever? Did that? Was that a thing? Was that always a thing? Players sitting out? No. This last two years. Yeah, last right? last couple years. About like the past few years. And I mean, it, I, it, it blows up. You know, power rankings. It, it makes the bowl. It season really does. A lot more difficult. We, but I mean, for you to handicap, the, or for well, you to everyone. Handicap I mean, everybody on both sides of the counter. Right. But I mean, realistically, if you got a chance to take care of your family. You're going to do that. Look at the Milton kid. The Milton kid's had five surgeries on his knee. Right. He may never get back on a field again. And he right. probably would have been. A guy that could have gotten drafted. Well, here's a good right. question, Javon. You could answer. Uh, anybody, obviously, you guys chime in. Do you think that that makes a guy look like if I'm an NFL owner and I see a guy sitting out, does that is that a strike against you, or do I view it as this guy's kind of responsible and sees the big picture? See, that's the thing. Like when I first started seeing them do this, I was thinking, well, maybe the teams, are, NFL teams, are going to think like maybe this guy may just all of a sudden just want to sit out for a certain reason, that's like for us when he gets up here, but. When you look at the big picture, as far as injuries and, and everything else is concerned. Oh, Aaron Rodgers and then, did it in week 17. And the thing is, he like. pulled himself out. The, the, the only guys who are sitting out are guys who are projected to go pretty early. It's like, like first round or whatever. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, say, like, the guys who's projected to go second or third round, they're not going to sit out because they got to get out there and bust their butts and make their stock go up even right, more. Right, right. That's a different argument. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is, is already – he, he's already paid. But I'm just saying, I don't think you can judge that kid's I would yeah. want kid on that now. because no. he is making a financial decision, not a team decision, right? right. And it, I'm I mean, not saying trust that. me, the kid would probably like to be out there, but there's a lot of people telling him, don't go out there. Yeah. Right. Well, so let me ask you, is the big fix making that a lead eight or working towards it? Because if you're not playing in the Cheez-Its Bowl or the PlayStation <laughs> Bowl, Bowl. See, yeah. and you're, because look at, look at the, you know the, the, the Fab Four. If there you're not many that sat out. If you're not playing in the Fruity Pebbles Bowl, <laughs> <laughs> Those are really the two bowls. I, just, I know, I know. I wish I would have played. What point does it become the Mark Madness? What kind of ball point does it become eight becomes sixteen? Okay. I think elite. Well, I, no, think eight like eight, I think eight is perfect. Eight is perfect. Like I, I think eight, eight really would did. be good. Like eight would definitely like have some of these guys who are sitting out these bowl Come games. You, you know, Stephen place. A. Smith would be screaming about the ninth place team. <laughs> but, he, but he would be referring to the twelfth place team. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> referring to the 12th place. Get the team wrong. Right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, again, I think, I don't know. I mean, again, we're just getting old. Yeah. But, you know, guys don't do two-a-days anymore, right? No. It's, now, you got, so it's, now you got players sitting out of bowl games. It just, I, I think it's going to hurt. I, I think it's going to over, it's going to hurt the sport overall, I think, in the long run. I think it will. It's I mean, starting to now. I mean, it's especially like what you mentioned about the West Virginia game. Like, I'm sure, like, Will Greer, Will Greer is there. He's their offense, and without right. him in the game, whatever is a totally different ball game. Are you sold on him though being the quarterback? I think him being in the game would have been better. Yeah, I think him being in the game would have re represented him better right. than sitting because Correct. he's good. But I don't, you know, there's no assumption that oh this guy is one or two. I mean, I think he needed to. I think that was a, a bad sit. Right. All right. Well, because let's move on. one. He comes oh, right, from right, a. He going. comes from I'll, a. I'll keep going. He comes from a very financially secure background, right? Uh huh. So I, he should have probably been in the game. Right. I mean, nobody's going in planning to get hurt, but I mean that's why a lot. That's a lot of these decisions are being made because of other situations. What was that player? The kid right. from uh, the kid that hurt his shoulder. Uh, he was a defensive back. Is it for Clemson? He does uh, public speaking now. He got hurt on the last play. Of, of, of the bowl. Yeah, he's an right? inspirational speaker. Yeah. Really. Well, your guy, McGahee. Oh, yeah. McGahee, same thing. That was one of the nastiest. That was injuries. awful. Yeah. But again, yeah. he still came back and, and played. But I mean, but he had an insurance policy. And, you know, I mean, back in the day, they, you took care of things like that. See, that's another thing. Because um, back in my junior year, they made me take out a Lords of London um, right. insurance as well. So, I mean, like, guys would be covered. And I actually, um, Did you my, pay for that with your uh, lunch card that you, you know, <laughs> access to the cafeteria with? Oh, come on. I don't I forget how I got <laughs> I think I took out a loan. They figured I was good for it. So, 
took out a loan. There's and, a couple um, guys I know that did that. Yeah. I or mean, my friends are it's what they do, whatever. I mean, that'll right. cover you as far as, like, if something happens with that or whatever, you have maybe, like, a $1 million, $2 million policy or whatever. But then again, you want to look at a couple mil. So you want to look at a big contract with the team. So sitting out would probably increase that chance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, sitting out this to go to the combine. The first time someone gets hurt in the combine, we're talking about something completely different again. No one's really blown a knee at the combine, but once once that happens, then what? Then right. then what are we in? Okay, this is it. We'll we'll move on. I mean, sure. well, oh, actually, I want to say something. To speak on that part right there, um, actually, um, when I went to the combine when it was in Indy, I actually didn't do anything there. I just they did my measurements, measurement hand. Um, so that's measurements as well. But they just did measurements and like I didn't run or do any of my drills until I went back and did my my, my workout at the University of Florida. Your pro day? Yeah, my pro day at UF where I did all my running and they actually like had me spend time doing stuff with linebackers and DNs. Right. But like I would just it would be safe to say though they know right that you don't need to do that. You know what I mean? They're like, yeah, we 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 know Javon can play. That's what I'm saying. You know so I mean? like, it, it's mostly for for the guys who are projected to go like a little bit later. It's a chance. Yeah, to they bring still got to prove up it. Some. Right. But you know what's crazy? I heard like Chris Spielman didn't, couldn't run <clears throat> over like a five four. I don't know how true that is. Like there was a bunch of guys back then. I heard Brian Cox. Remember him? Couldn't yeah. bench like 200 or something. I read this article. If you're watching Brian, but I know you're not. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's what I read. Uh, it. None of that stuff just gives you an idea, but it really doesn't know what type of player you are until you actually hit the field. Now, you know, there's guys you could look great on. What was that expression? Uh, looks like Tarzan plays like Jane. Yeah. You know what I mean? Seen, um, seen that. <laughs> but the big picture, this is what I wanted to get into. The big picture of, of football, I think, is getting hurt. I think this hurts the game. Um, even what they're doing with the Pro Bowl now. Uh, no no two-a-days. And, and again, I, I keep harping on these referees, but good God. I mean, we, the week we were dark, uh, they, they won that game for the Eagles. Lots they of, put them in field goal range. Over, uh, what about that hit against uh, Tampa Bay on uh, Woods? I think that it was a clean hit. They still flagged it. And it, it's just ruining the game. Those, it, those damn zebras. <laughs> they need to go back to Foot Locker. <laughs> All right, let's, All right, let's move, move on. on. Now we're going to do a little lifestyle one-on-one -on -one with your boy, Brett. Now I'm trying to teach this kid, Alex the lost art form of being a gentleman. So what I did was I took him to the spa at the Delano, Good. right here at the Mandalay Bay, and uh, we got to uh, a little grown man enlightenment. So, to, say, to say the least. Couldn't teach him how to shave? So we're at the spa here at the Delano Hotel and Resort, and I'm gonna teach this kid how to be a gentleman. And pretty much we're about to do one of the most masculine things you could ever do to be a gentleman. Which is? All right, Alex, now I usually wait till the end of football season to get a manicure because I bite my nails every week, as do you. <laughs> um, but you know what? It's good. It's good because, you know, it's, it could be a waste of money if, if you bite them. So this is my first time. My middle nail is stinging right now. Ow! Do you bite your nails? Fuck. It actually hurts. Do you bite your nails? No. I, I don't have a team anymore, remember? San Diego Chargers. Yeah, but you gamble. You bet on every game. You don't Dude, bite your nails at all. My mom's watching the program, man. I don't bet. Uh, but really, though, if one of my nails is stinging, what does that mean? Is that a hangnail situation? No, that, or that's that... an STD that you got. It's, Dude! <laughs> it's called tinderitis. Don't do that to me. I'm no, stationary. It's, it's called tinderitis. It's from swiping too much. I feel like we're in 11th grade geometry right now. I'm sitting in my... <laughs> Yo, pass the answers back. Uh, it would be, if it would be more like passing forward. <laughs> Brett, what are the benefits to getting a manicure? Well, it's, uh, you, know how the, you know how the window, the eyes are a window to your soul? Right. Your hands are a window to your cleanliness. <laughs> no, I'm serious. If you have well-kept hands, it, it, it usually means that, you know, you take care of yourself. You're not a filthy animal. To quote like, you, what, did you read that on a magnet? <laughs> no. Like, she's, like, if she sees you're properly manicured, she knows you don't have dishes in your sink. Which that's another thing, you guys stop. Is that correct, Marie? Clean, clean your, take the dishes out of your sink. Be an adult, Alex. I defrost food from Trader Joe's. I don't have to worry about dishes. <laughs> I gotta teach you how to cook too. So does Joe Montana get a mani-pedi? Absolutely. 
No I hesitation. Have, no hesitation. One, he's Italian. <laughs> and two, yeah, he's a gentleman, man. I mean, this guy, yeah, of course he does. Dan Marino gets him too. I mean, I... What percentage of the NFL starting he quarterbacks? Those, he puts the isotoners over it. I think all of them, <laughs> honestly. I, th it, I think I would bet that 98% of them. I don't think Brett Favre is. No, I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say, you might get a white, filthy animal like Brett Favre. <laughs> you know what I mean? But a, but a, but a normal manicured gentleman. You know Brady gets these done. Giselle has absolutely got Tom Brady. Well, I think Tom Brady did it on his own. I mean, the guy wears Uggs. But yeah, I think, uh, I think Giselle absolutely has Tom Brady getting his nails done. I think this is an, uh, an art form, I guess, that's lost on your generation. I would say so. To get a manicure and pedicure is, is a very gentlemanly thing to do. Now this goes back all the way to the turn of the century when the Italians first came here from Sicily. How is this the most gentleman <laughs> thing you could do? I'm not a blue collar guy, but if my hands look like I'm a working man, why would my fingernails want well, to be dialed in? What I'm trying to tell in? you is our grandfathers were working men and they still got, got manicures and yeah, pedicures. Yeah, right! I don't think my Jewish relatives were going to Manny You're Penny's You're half very Italian, channel, channel into that. And, yeah. and I gotta be honest with you, I didn't know what to expect when I saw your foot at first, but it's not a bad <laughs> foot. It's not bad. What defines a good foot versus no, no, a bad your, foot? Your toes look like fingers. <laughs> <laughs> right? This is why I was self-conscious. This you're is why I never go. two manicures. Dude, I have a second bigger toe than my first. Do you think that feels good in middle school? No, but I'm saying your, your feet don't look bad, bro. I was very shocked. I thought you'd have like bat feet where the, where the toes are all messed up. You also said they could be on a skeleton chart, so. That's just the shape of your toes. <laughs> We're going to need a pillow barrier here in the next five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> we got the massage chair on. Don't you, don't you dare. I'm done with don't you. Don't you dare. <laughs> no, I got a callus on my big toe because I was doing some grown man stuff around the house. <laughs> now that I own a home, got to mow the lawn, lay some tile. It happens. Be an adult. I'm a grown man. This is all part of being an adult is maintenance. So here at the spot at the Delano, this is an above bar Manny Patty. This is like top of the line. Yeah, this looks like there's many fish in here. But usually the ones in LA, you know, you go in and it's like 15 minutes. But it's just good good to do. There are bad ones though that they, if they don't clean their tools or they don't do something, you can get an infection. Oh, that's what my, ha that's, ha that's what half yes. myself wants to Thank you, that's here. what Thanks. I was gonna say. Always go to a spot. Always go to a spot, don't go to the, you know, the ones where you could go get a massage in the back and it's suspect. <laughs> Very important, toenails buffed, or you can use buff or polish with the toenail. I prefer buff. If you go to some other places, you know, it's a little bit more expensive to buff. Yeah. Um, but there's also a protein finish, but it looks bad sometimes when it starts peeling, so then you gotta take it off. So prefer the buff. But remember, right. fingers always buff. Don't ever put polish on your fingernails. What if you're in a rush? You look like a jerk off. Just don't do that. All right. I now know why women do this. So to all you kids at home, all of Alex's generation know this. Sinatra, Dean Martin, John Gotti, Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Joe Montana, Tom Brady, even Javon Kurse. Real men get manicures and pedicures. And they also get them buffed, no polish. That's all you need to know, kid. So, on behalf of Janet, Marie, the bathhouse here at the Delano Hotel and Resort at the Mandalay Bay, we want to thank you guys for giving us a proper manicure and pedicure. Your feet, though, man, your finger, you got finger toes, phalanges. Ooh. <laughs> but, but, I, um, but I 1,000% approve of this. Do you really? Yeah. I, I was very skeptical. I live in South Florida. I own at least 10, 12 pair of, um, of thong flip-flops. And guess what? Toes are out. But so they, I, I actually went around and asked a bunch of women. What Jay gets thoughts. them done. Yeah. 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 Every now and then, I got a, a mangled middle finger. They kind of glaze over that one. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that women were looking at fingernails. I had no yeah, idea. Yeah, they, they kept they do. They kept showing people. Do you notice this? And they're like, <laughs> Oh, that's nice. I go, I tell you, man, you got you got to get it done. It's, I don't glam every day, Brett. It's All a right? window to the soul. Your hands let people know you know how to take care of yourself. All right. Well, I appreciate the gentlemen. The R and R. And again, all those, all those athletes, they all get them done, right or wrong. The guys on your team get them done too, right? Yeah, they do. You think, LeBron, you think LeBron gets it done? 
LeBron, I think, yeah. I think, I think, I yeah. think Jordan gets him done. No, I'm uh, almost certain they all do. I don't think Larry Bird does. I think, I think a lot I of think pitchers. I think a lot of pitchers do because nail, nail care. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, I don't think the Hick from French Lick yeah. is getting buffed phalanges. Um, but yeah, I absolutely, uh, LeBron gets. Just don't get any right. French, any French tips and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to do that. Good to know. We'll, we'll speak about and it more. Also, later. you can buff the toes as well. I buff my toenail. We, we went well. over that. We went yeah. over. I'm still not off book on all the terminology, but yeah. bringing it back to LeBron, our first hot topic for the day. LeBron on his HBO series, The Shop, recently referred to himself as the GOAT, which means the greatest of all time. It was a particular series and moment, the Cleveland 3-1 deficit, beating GSW. I'm going to kick it to the right side of me. Gentlemen, you have the floor. Is LeBron, in fact, correct? Or incorrect. First off, uh, I, I watched it. I, the way he said it, I think he believed. Like he said it, like it was an accident. He's like, "This game right here made me the greatest of all time." <laughs> you know what I mean? And, th and then it just came out. Uh, I think he's. I think he's off. I don't think he's the greatest of all time. And, and I know it's a generational thing. With the, I just don't see. I don't see. It, it reminds me of when. Tommy Gunn in Rocky Five was like, I'm the champ now. And, and it's like, you didn't put that. There's a, there's a difference between the two. By the way, I will never reference Rocky Five again. I'm sorry. Please, please don't. That was please awful. I, I, I know that movie should never, that, that movie didn't even exist. It's Godfather like, Three next? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm, Go ahead. I, mean, what were you all, I, think, I think all athletes probably have that in your mind. That's what makes you what you are. You have and to. And the ability to perform on the field or court. But... It's left up to someone else to decide that. Well, I would say this. That's my, see, that's my thing there or whatever. Like, like, you have to have that mentality going into these, going into these games, going into this sport, well, the sport of, of your desire. But you definitely like, has, have to have that mindset to where you feel like you're the best player out there. You feel like you're the best player like, on, like, on the field period on either team. So that's just the, like, the mentality that you have to go in there with. And on top of that, I mean, I it, mean look, look. It, is up for, it is up to someone else because, like, when people started calling me the freak, they started calling me the freak. Like, it wasn't me like, oh, well, I'm the freak. Oh, I killed it. No. You mean you don't nickname That's... yourself like Alex does? Money Monaco? Money, Money Monaco. Monaco. No. Like, I didn't wake up calling myself, <laughs> you know what? I feel like the freak today. <laughs> no, it just doesn't work like that. But. Well, getting back to, to that mentality, and athletes do, but even as a comic, like, you, you, you have confidence in yourself and in your ability. But I'm not, you, you don't sit there and go, I'm the greatest, I'm the greatest. I mean. You know, well, it's just, especially in a team sport, and especially when it's almost a consensus. I mean, most, Jordan, what were we going to say? Jordan didn't. Kareem didn't. Right. Right. No, didn't. Nobody else did it. They, they let people say it for them. Right. I know you said it was a team sport, Brett, but my rebuttal. Detlef was... Schreff didn't. <laughs> but wait, no, get, get to his point. <laughs> Magic said Bird. Bird said Jordan. Um, Jordan even said you can't compare eras. Um, and... But so you have, I so don't, you have, but Brett, you have prize fighters but here, but you, calling themselves the goats. Mayweather, McGregor, Ali. Why but that's, is that okay? Because it's they're that's, not part of a team. Of, and that's more of an individual sport, though. Yeah, that's right. But one you person. still in a team sport want to think you can be the okay. But listen, listen. And the alpha. If you're going into war and you're by yourself, you're going to tell yourself, I, "It's just me versus this person." One man walks out. It's a whole different mentality than saying, "Okay, I'm part of a team." You know, uh, there, there are four other guys running with me. Um, there is a whole legacy of other teams. I, I, I don't know. A team. It, yeah. Um, you're playing against other teams. I don't I mean, know. If, 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 if I. If, 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 did. Derek Jeter did. Barry Bonds did. Yeah. Right. But if, See, if you look at this like, from my lens, right, as if you were to handicap, let's just call Jordan and LeBron, right? They've basically been in the league 15 years each. Jordan has six titles, LeBron has three. So that's basically, if you equate that to a batting average, that's 400 versus 200. I mean, I mean so I, I would say Jordan is like a two-to-one favorite in this argument, hands down. Well, yeah. he, all right, here's a question for anybody if you want to field it. In order to be the greatest of all time, you have to think that you're, you're playing the best basketball, like right now in the league, that's the best of all time, right? But, but not only that, then. You only, like if you're in a team sport, you're only as good as your team as well. So well, you can no, be the best all time and score like a million points, but if your team isn't doing the same thing, right. that's going to take you so far. Well, I mean, in LeBron's defense, though, he does have way more assists than Jordan did. I mean, LeBron does 
share the ball a little bit more. But my, my, this is my point, though. In order for LeBron to think he's the greatest of all time, he must think that this is the best basketball has ever been. And then he is the best of his generation. But I think Jordan was playing against better teams and better talent overall. So if he said he was, LeBron said he was the best of his generation, you guys would all be okay with that statement? Yeah, absolutely. No, yeah. But, but, but here's, how about this, though? He is right? the best of his generation. He manufactured a lot at what his success, right? Going to Miami, that was a manufactured right. team. Yeah. Right. The Bulls weren't. I mean, everything was much more organic. I hate using that word, back in the day. I agree. You know, you make, like a, you make an all-star team. You better, you should win, right? I mean, right. but that's not the same. So, I mean, it is apples and oranges somewhat. And, and LeBron's a great kid, you know. I'm convinced he was convincing himself in that moment. He's yeah. a great kid. He looked like he yeah. was 40 when he was 15. But he's still a good kid, man. Again, you're talking about, you know, again, you're talking two hot chicks. All right, let's, yeah. let's, uh, let's get into the how next to. segment. This was our how-to segment. Jay, uh, Jay hooked us up, man. Yeah. Jay hooked me and Alex up with the Mandalay Bay pit boss. Uh, uh, Robert Riley. Robert Riley. Yeah. And, and uh, to show us and you people at home how to play some of the more popular uh, table games, I guess, right? Yeah, what did are they he, called? Is it did, table games? Table games, yeah. Table games. Yeah. Did, roulette, did, blackjack, did, craps. Did, yeah. He showed you some out. betting strategy, like roulette, like neighbors and all that sort of jazz? Yeah, he, yeah, he taught us about uh, betting the street. It was all, well, we could talk about it afterwards. Do you, nice. do you do you, are you the one that set the odds for all that? What pays out? <laughs> no, that's someone. That com that's a completely different department. Computer. <laughs> all right, let's roll. Let's, let's roll, roll this. The, uh, there we go. Look, we look awful again. All right, we're here at the roulette table. My favorite game. Yeah, I don't know how to play this, man. I really don't. My wife plays this game, so could you explain this to us? What yeah, it's pretty game? pretty easy, basically. Uh, you, you pick your favorite number. If it comes up, we're gonna pay you. All the outside bets pay even money. They pay one to one. We have the dozens. We have the first dozen, the second dozen, the third dozen. First dozen's one through 12, second dozen's 13 through 24, third dozen's 25 through 36. Any one of those hits, and you're in that section, say the eight hits, we're gonna pay the dozens two to one. Oh. All right, different from the outside where you'd only get even money. It's a little harder to get than that is. Mm -hmm. So that goes two to one. Our next bet we have is called a street bet. A street bet, it's three numbers. You put, you place them, there'll be seven, eight, nine. 16, 17, 18. Spin the ball. If that hits, take down the losers. Street bet pays 11 to one. He would get back $22 for his $2 bet. Wow, so it's 11 to one odds on the street bet. You can bet one number, you can bet two numbers, mm -hmm. Three numbers was what we just showed is a street. You can bet a corner. On the corner, that would be one, two, four, and five. Any of those numbers comes comes in, pays eight to one. You'd get eight dollars for your one buck. Now what if I just, one what if I just bet the eight? If you bet the eight straight up, if you hit a straight up number, pays thirty-five to one. Wow. So for one dollar, we would give you thirty-five dollars in chips. What's this, does this pay more than the rest or the same? No, actually it's just like a number. It's like any other number. It pays 35 to one straight up. There's different ways to get at, at the zero and, and if you want to combine other numbers there, you can go straight up, you can bet two numbers. That's in between the zero and the three, those would be two numbers. Zero and the two would be two numbers. Zero and the one would be two numbers. They'd have to do one of those two numbers for that. Why are those even, that's just there to screw, to, to... Mess the odds up? Is that the hook, as Jay would say? It changes it from a 50% game, like you said. Uh -huh. It's not 50-50 no more out there. Now the house has a little advantage. Now for right. beginners, do you have any recommendations for strategy? Nah, I just pick my favorite numbers, I would say. Just pick your favorite numbers, enjoy the game, and if you get lucky and hit your numbers, you win a few dollars, and that's let's, fun. Let's pick our favorite numbers, I'm ready to play. I'm ready. Let's do it, and let's give, the, give it a this. spin. Troy Aikman, Roger Staubach, <laughs> Danny White, Tony Dorsett, Emmett Smith, Let's see well, Raphael Septian. <laughs> it's going a little old school on us here. I oh, like yeah, it. I like absolutely. it. I'm gonna go Rivers. <laughs> Falk. Good, I don't like going Durant. Did he say Falk? Yeah. Marshall okay, Falk. I was just checking. 
Old oh, school MJ. Hold on, gotta go Dennis Thurman, and I gotta go uh, Everson Walls. How about Antonio and Cromartie? And Michael Downs. <laughs> yeah, you can't leave Cromartie. Actually, that's, where's Darren Woodson? I'll throw Darren, I want on Dan. There he is. Love it. All right, anybody got. want to make any outside bets or anything? Uh, here, hold on. You know what? I'll do, uh... Feeling hot. When playing roulette, if when this ball is spinning, you are allowed to still bet That's until chip, until all the right, dealer all right, all right. until the dealer waves you off. Go, but go ahead. Oh, third twelve. Let me do a color. Red. Now the ball's getting closer to the drop. I'm going to give it a, no more bets. Two spins should be left, and it'll drop down into the thing. Marshall. The bolt. Marshall. And Are guess you what? Me? Hit? Seventeen. 17. Give me that fill of all right, Three. so Seven. I'm gonna take all these all these bets are lost. The winner that. they picked right on the 17 gets 35 to one. Wow. Spend it all in one place. God, I lost. Guess this means the Chargers are beating the Ravens. This is not my game. All right, well, Robert, I appreciate it. Robert, thank um, you. Yeah, thank you for 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 teaching us this Half game. Half back to you. All right. So, yeah, yeah, I gotta tip you out as well. There you go, buddy. All right. So. Craps is my game. That's the game I want. All right, let's, let's run, head run. over there, Robert. Let's do it. Alex, you hit the 17. You know what's crazy? And I forgot the 17. We both said 17 at the same time. Yeah. And, then, then, and then the funny part was, Jay, and uh, I wish you were here. We really thought we were lucky. <laughs> and we went out to the casino and it just did not work out for any of us. Didn't work out the same way? <laughs> no. Not even That's close. surprising. But uh, guys at home, we're going to have a, a whole series of these. We have, uh, we have uh, uh, Blackjack coming up. We have um, Craps coming up. So, you know, they, I, uh, that was that's 17. Yeah. That must mean Chargers on the road. <laughs> well, we'll talk about that in a that's second. a great segue, but I also want to say that was the high roller room. That's the new high roller yeah, yeah. room here at Mandalay Bay. They let us in. Unbelievable. Guys play like 10,000. Uh, they have their own little buffet back there, too. Did they you got see everything that? Well, food there. and They're everything. Oh, yeah. Open bar. Pretty nice. It's like a wedding. They have a pool table back there. Yeah. yeah. Reception. Yeah, it's like a wedding. They had a heart player, ice sculptures. <laughs> <laughs> then a cage, I had to put the boost in, the envelope. Get your, get dog, get your dog shampooed. You know. Dude, it's, it's amazing back there. Guy, we, oh we, you had a great segue and I had to jump on it. Oh, it's all good. Hey, we're, we're coming up on the BCS National Championship Monday night after Wild Car Weekend. It is upon us. Bama, Clemson for the fourth year in a row. Oh, Gen oh, man. Oh. They're one and one. That was, that, right <laughs> that. Yeah. that was some redneck stuff that just happened like that. That was some redneck, the woo, roll tide. And, That's right, come on. And that rebel yell. Let's go. Yeah. go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh. No, it's all good. So, so Bama won the semifinal against Clemson last That's year, but true. they're one and one against each other in Natty Champs. They're going at each other on Monday night. The spread at the moment is minus five and a half. Jay made that spread. That's Jay. Correct. That's yeah. the guy. You guys will realize. Throw the, throw the hook on That's the guy. This, That's this, the commandant. That's the midnight to five guy. Why the <laughs> hook? Why the hook? You just have Tommy come no, in. No, with but nobody wants to tie. <laughs> That's, That's true. That's decision. Remember. All right, so let's talk. You're no going to see a hook on big games like that. Super Bowl, I'm going to throw a hook on it. We don't oh, want to tie. We don't want to tie. Okay, all right. That's good to know. So if you're if you're at home right now and you're looking at point, this guy made that spread five and a half. They can bet and play a gym. We'll send you his address. Yeah, now, can, now, before yeah. we get into our picks, can you give us insight to why it's five and a half? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, both teams obviously had the best power ratings all the way through the, the regular season. Um, but basically what the differential boils down to, I mean, both, both teams have fairly similar power ratings unit for unit. But I think what separates Bama from Clemson is the strength of schedule that they played and also – the, um, the, the players on their team have a, a, a little bit more maturity uh, on their side. The, you know, we got a freshman quarterback coming in. Some of that stuff is factored in externally. Like, just that's, that's this. That's the gut. That's not necessarily the numbers uh, matching that it's out. Right. So if this was at Alabama, you know, you're talking eight and a half, nine, nine and a half. Wow. If this was at Clemson, you know, it's probably like Bama one and a half. Yeah. You know, really? At, on a neutral field like this, yeah. I mean, it's – and. It's a weird, weird scenario, too, because, I mean, these are two very East Coast, you know, Southeast sort of teams playing in San Francisco. I mean, it's, uh, it's going to be weird to see which fan base really shows up and has, has a strong impact. Oh, it's going to be so, Alabama. You guys, you, you guys heard, you know, all the ticket sales are kind of slow and all this, all that jazz. But, yeah, I would imagine Alabama will travel well. But, I mean, yeah, they are. well, I just read it. fan base. What do you like, Jay? Got a few bucks. Me, personally? 
I would take the tide, roll tide. Roll tide. Dude, I, I just, that's what we're going to need. All I keep hearing is at the, when I'm sitting at the counter, and this is pure insight straight from the front lines. Everybody is talking Clemson, talking Clemson, talking Clemson. But I think last year's semifinal game was a glimpse into what happen, it happens in this game. So, wait, so people are laying on Clemson, then they're going for the up. Well, yeah. Really? Uh, major, major, like, majority of the public is Clemson. Um, rolling with the time. Let's go. Wait, wait, I wanted to bring something else up. They said uh, Tua's bringing like 400 family members to yeah, the game. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, really oh, wow. But, I mean, yeah. how, how is he getting these tickets? One, one of the islands. People. But I'm saying you're talking about who's going to travel. Yeah, I couldn't. I, who's paying for that? Hmm. Uh, no idea. Oh. It's a write off, Jerry. Steve mail card? Yeah, yeah. I have a question too. I mean, I don't know if you know. You would know this answer. What's that? So when you're in a bowl game, do they a lot? Uh, say there's fifty thousand people that can sit there. Twenty five thousand tickets to Florida. Twenty five thousand tickets to whoever you're playing. Yeah. That's it, it. So that's that's all they have to fill. That's it. So one can't out can't travel more than in the stadium. No, I think there's I think there's a, a, a minor allotment, and then and then if they exceed that, then they can start. You know, I think there's a guaranteed amount. It is like for both yeah. teams. Like uh -huh. they try to make it like pretty even for both teams, but it's always one team that's gonna end up having like more fans. Yeah, uh, who, you, who you got? Who do you like? I mean, I can't say roll tide because I'm an <laughs> SEC man, a Florida Gator, but I'm gonna say Alabama. I yeah. like I like Alabama. Right? Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I'm going Clemson. Oh, he's Clemson. going I'm with the tell you why. Like, I'm gonna tell you why. That kid Trevor, I saw the kid Trevor Lawrence in an interview. He doesn't know he's playing in a national championship. <laughs> he's like Spicoli from okay. Fast Time at Ridgemont High. No, I remember he goes, he, goes, he goes, where's the confetti? He goes, well, well, we'll have confetti next week. He just doesn't. <laughs> and there's something special about that kid. Now, I, I think Tua is unbelievable. That kid's phenomenal. Yeah. All the way around, great guy. Um, I don't know, man. It just it smells like USC, Texas. Wow. Taking the five and a half. I'm taking the five and a half. All right. I changed my mind. I got to see it. Roll Tide. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Say, hey, man, I'm going on a limb. I can burn it. I can burn it. Right. Yeah. I'm going on a limb. You got a, mm. Aaron converted Javon. We got three for Bama and one for Clemson. Now, right. remember, if they went outright, they went outright. But five and a half points, I, I think it's going to be a close game. Brett is taking the points. Taking right. the points. All right. I would not bet the money line. I wouldn't go that far. But I'm definitely yeah. gonna take Clemson apart. I think they're gonna give him a fight, man. Yeah, Jay, what's the money line at? Uh, Clemson like plus one seventy. Clemson plus one seventy. Bama minus two dollars. Bama minus two dollars. All right. Wow. Let's talk playoffs, guys. How about that? Huh? Playoffs. Play, play, playoffs. Playoffs. Well, the time is here. Playoffs have started. I have not been this excited about a wild card weekend. Look at our new graphic. Oh, look at that. How That's amazing. That. How nice work, Ryan. That? Love it. Shout out Ryan. I have yeah. not I have not been excited about a wild card weekend like this in a long time. Usually you get like one or two games you don't want to see. I want to see every one of these games. Right. I mean there's just I because I don't know. I can't I, I, I don't know. I know one thing. I'll put my air, my phone on airplane mode on Saturday just in case because I, I can't take that phone call. Well Saturday. if you're San Diego. I can't do it. I can't do it. Well what, what about your San Diego Chargers? Jack. Not Los Angeles. Hold me back. <laughs> San Diego Chargers. They're on the road at at, at the uh Indianapolis uh, Ravens. <laughs> oh, you know what? <laughs> Guys, I, I, for <laughs> I like that. I forgot to. Uh, Didn't these are yearly records because the season's over. Yeah, we'll do that at the end. You want to do it at the end? Yeah, well, because we still have to make picks. Well, that's. I thought we we're going to make picks now, no? Yeah. Okay. Let's okay. do that. Let's have our picks. Who do you like in the four games? I, I, I'm, I'm going to go. I'll start with Jay. Start with Jay. Let's start with Jay. Okay. Yeah. Start with Jay. Sure. We'll do the Saturday games first. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. You mean Frank Pantangeli? Yeah. He says, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, All right, so, so we're going to start off uh, uh, two teams that week three you would have never thought got here, but um, I'm, I'm going to stick with Titans at home. Uh, I'm going to take your boys minus Titans. the – Titans. I mean, uh, Texans at home, I'm sorry. Wow. Ooh, uh, I'm like going to stick with the uh, Cowboys at home, all these short prices. And uh, then I'm, I'm taking the, the team that I think that can actually win the game, catching points, San Diego Chargers. And uh, and I'm gonna go with the Eagles plus the points. Wow. I'm I'm a I'm a believer in this dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. Am I Big going Nick. next? Yeah. What do you got? All right. Big I'm Nick. Go I'm going. <laughs> I'm going Texans at home, with conviction. Shout out Frank Reich for going for it in overtime in Week Four and giving them home field. I'm going <laughs> Dallas 
Are you, t- are you going, going Dallas? Dallas. I don't going feel, Seattle. I don't feel great about it, but I'm going Dallas. And then, I'm going, and then I'm going Ravens. Let's go. And you better believe I'm going with 8-1, Nick Foles, and the six points. All right, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm taking the Colts, man. I think the Colts are gelling. It's Lux, Lux playing. Uh, that Cowboys-Seahawks game, man. I'm, I, I got to go Dallas. But I'm, uh, that is not a uh, – that's an emotional thing for me. Yeah. It's going down. Yeah, no. Welcome because I, I can't go either way. There's no, I have no gut feeling on this one. I don't know. Could do gambler's insurance. I think the Ravens' defense is, is – Chargers have let me down so much this year. I think I'm going against them finally. I'm taking the Ravens' defense. And – Wow. Big – Yeah! Big hey. Nick Foles, man. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, man. This kid, he's scaring me. The Bears' defense is legit, but I don't know what their offense is going to do. Mm, you know? That's another call. Good call. And as much as I hate to say it, I'm, I'm flying with the Eagles over, over the Bears. Now I'm going to throw up in Man. my mouth. <laughs> with the points, though. We're talking with the points. Right, sure. I, I, sure. No sure. money line. Seems like a field goal game. Okay. Texans over the Colts. Deshaun Watson. He's playing lights out, that kid. Watson and Watt. You got, you got Watt. You have Davion Clowney on defense. Definitely uh, going with the Texans there. Seahawks Cowboys. I couldn't get a real gauge in that one there. So, I'm pulling for the Seahawks. I know you. I, I, I mean, I, the, the Seahawks. I mean, my home? One, one of these, <laughs> Where my wife sleeps and my children play. One of these home. teams is going to go on the road and they're going to show up. And I believe the Seahawks is that team. I think Pete Curl is going to get those boys going. Right? Right. Okay, cool. So, now back to the Chargers and Ravens. That defense in Baltimore, solid. But then you got Lamar Jackson. He is the difference maker. I like that one there. The same quarterback that they won't let throw 20 yards down the field? <laughs> he doesn't have to because he's going to run for 30 or 40 yards. Hey, you know what? Yeah. yeah. Really like okay, now. now. I'm going to do his last pick. I, I don't know. Get, Vic uh, could throw a 40 yard ball on the wire. Eagles, Bears. Um, it's tough. I like how the Bears finished their season. You know, they finished, they finished up strong. Um, defense playing pretty good. But like you said, like you alluded to, the offense. You don't know what's going to happen with the offense. Um, with that said, I'm rolling with Big Nick <laughs> Foles. That's their quarterback. I, I, I agree. And I would say this. If, if Wentz was starting, I'd definitely take the Bears. <laughs> you know, but Nick Foles, I mean, it, the guy is just lights out. Getting back to Jack, uh, Jack, uh, Lamar. Lamar Jackson. Um, isn't it good to see the Heisman Trophy winners actually doing well? Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, like even uh, what's his name? Uh, Baker Charlie Baker Mayfield. Ward. Yeah. yeah. Charlie Ward playing yeah. running point guard for the New- Vance. for the Knicks. <laughs> no, I'm saying uh, I'm exactly. saying yeah. You, you got two. You got the quarterbacks are playing well. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah. Well, let's do our picks, um, guys. We have not hit a parlay all season. No. Here's our final I, records may, for the may, year. By maybe the way. we need to switch gears and do a teaser. Well, we we yeah. we have tried. I'm down for it. We have tried to help people. <laughs> Javon Kurz Foundation needs. Javon Kurz Foundation. We bankrupted it by not winning. <laughs> people no, have I lost gotta, homes. I ordered things and had to pay for things out of my pocket. Like, can we like at least like? We're gonna try and get it going. Don't worry. <laughs> we haven't done anything for my charity. We have the hero. Nobody's won anything. Not. Like, I'll do like Alex. What's going on? <laughs> Nobody's won anything. The only thing, the only Kids are dying. We got this. We got to help people. Parlay. Who do you use our parlay? Our charity parlay this week. All right, who's your locks? Four games. You get one. Just throw them out. We got to do this quick. All um, right, I'm going Philly plus six. December Foles, eight and one. Philly, they've won five of their last six. Reminds me a little bit of the Giants when they were the sixth seed. Coming in with no pressure. Pressure's on the Bears. Haven't been in the playoffs since 2011. I'm going with Big Nick. All right. There you have Who, it. Who's wow. your lock? My lock is going to be the Texans. I just love what I just love what they did this season. And then Deshaun Watson is back from being injured last season. So I think he has something to prove this year. Yeah. Jay? I'm taking the Chargers. Plus the points. The Los wow. Angeles Chargers. Yes. And I'll just make it. I'll, I'll take the Cowboys. Cowboys. <laughs> you <doing the> parlay? <laughs> I didn't ruin anything. It's all passion. It's not real. Cowboys, Eagles, 
Chargers. Texas. 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 And, and I just want to go over, by the way, our records sure, go through the record. for the year. Yeah. After 17 <laughs> weeks of football, okay? No one dwells in the past. Yeah, well, you know. I'm 33 for 18 on the season. What does that say? What say you, Jay? That's a, good, that's a great record. That's a great record, right. Alex is a little over 50, 50%, 29 and 22 for yeah. the season. So, you know, Javon, not quite, not quite burning money. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> You're 23 for 28, but I will say this. I'm the caboose, so but what? You, you picked winners, you just didn't pick against Didn't the cover the spread. See, didn't like, this spread thing is new to me. And Jay, so, we, uh, didn't, yeah, yeah. we didn't really. We but really, Jay is going to get me, like, get me, like, yeah, more Yeah, we're going to get you educated. Thing. Yeah, you're yes. going to be, yes. you're gonna yes. be yes. popping yes. out winners left and right. Yes. So, for yes. all you people watching, next season, where's, which camera are we on? Next season? No, uh, next season, guys, we're going to start betting with me. I'm <laughs> uh, Documented, online, I am 33 and 18 for the season. And I went 0-3, what, two weeks ago. It was the worst week I had. Yeah. And I went 3-0, and but I'd say next year, bet against me. I don't do it in the past. It doesn't matter what I did. <laughs> <laughs> now it's playoffs, so it's a clean slate. Playoffs? And... <laughs> but, guys, I, um, I must say, being a former player, like, the, cool, the coolest thing about the playoffs is like, it's like a, it's a brand-new season. Like, you got preseason. That's the season in itself. Regular season, 16 games. That's the season in itself. But then once you get the playoffs, like, all that stuff you did during the season is out the window. Like, like it doesn't now, matter, right? Like now it's all about what we're doing today. Like it doesn't matter what happened week two, week three, or week four. It's like right now, a brand new season. So I well, love you, it. When you get in the playoffs, though, as a player and you're hurt, do you not feel hurt anymore? Or do you just like, <laughs> I can suck it up. I got four good. You just, you just suck it up. You tell yourself you got all, you have all off season to get right. You have all, all off season like to get back well and do what you got to do. So basically, so mentally you're like, there, it's a light at the tunnel. You're yes. like, this is how many games so, I have. So you win, you end. Let me ask a question. Is it sweeter winning at home or winning at someone else's place knowing that you just ended their season? Oh, uh, good. I guess it depends. If it's your divisional rival or something, then it'll feel good like beating them at their place. Like my first year when we beat Jacksonville in the AFC, in the AFC Championship you game. You don't like Jacksonville, do you? No, I mean, I love Jacksonville. Jacksonville was my second home, home away from home. And then, but, no, the but thing, I meant like that, the, the Jaguars, that, was that the team yeah, you hated the most? Yeah, that was our, our rival. Like, we always had some pretty good games against the, those guys. And then for me, it's like I was playing back, back home in Florida because yeah, yeah. Jacksonville from Gainesville is only Bang. like about a two hour drive. Down. So it's right there, yeah. Yeah. Duval! <laughs> 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 All right, guys, that's it. We got to wrap it up. Um, let's see what this weekend brings, man. This is a great, I, I am so, I like I'm so stoked for tomorrow. It's exciting. All right, so listen, people, if you're at home and you haven't joined our social media yet, go to the DGshow.com. The, D as in degenerate, G as in gentleman show.com. The DGshow.com. And you can add us on everything, on, on uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, all of it. And um, that's it. That's about it, guys. Uh, once again, I'm Brett Ernst with Javon Curse. Jay Rude and uh, Gobo Fraggle. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Make sure you call your moms. God bless. Peace. <laughs>